when I arrived, um, kind of late 2013 to Sussex, this thing Sussex Neuroscience, um, Mike was incredibly encouraged and uh, uh, but as well as making sure I put on the, uh, you know, the eye tracking device and so on and talking me through it, um, he told me a lot about the history of neuroscience here at Sussex and uh, actually, we interviewed him, didn't we? And we interviewed others about uh, Ruth Saras over there, and I interviewed a few people to kind of try and get some of this documented. Um, and uh, I sent around an email. It's a typical, Mike. You know, you send around an email to like a, an email list, and nobody responds. But this was an email just to ask if some people had some pictures to liven up the building room we're in CRPC. And yeah, Mike had loads of pictures. So these things, and you know, he sent me all these JPEGs. And so these things went up, uh, I think around 2014, and they adorned uh, the CRPC building where lots of the kind of experimental neuroscience uh, research goes here. And I, I suspect a lot of the younger people, they had no idea that these are all kind of Mike's pictures and uh, uh, some of yours, Dan, as well. Yes, yes sorry. <laughs> some of yours, and he sent me lots of pictures. But um, that's just one very small example of kind of how encouraging he was. Uh, Barden, where's Tom? You got your job because of Mike. <laughs> We've got to have this guy uh, after you came. Get it, honestly, so uh, input on, on recruitment and uh, all sorts of things. And he was a terribly uh, 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 enthusiastic um, supporter of Sussex neuroscience and keen that censoring neuroscience uh, in general, not just visual neuroscience, that, that, that does well at Sussex. And actually he wrote a very nice little chapter for a book that there's a copy of out there called Making the Future, which was published on the 50th anniversary of the university. And Mike's got a, a chapter there about sensory, uh, uh, the history of sensory neuroscience in Sussex. Uh, quite a lot about you in there, Paul. Well, Paul I know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyway so if uh, th th there's some copies of that it's just a short chapter there's some copies out there if anybody wants to kind of uh, grab a quick uh, uh, um, potted history of uh, sensory neuroscience here at Sussex uh, anyway those are just some examples oh and of course watching Mike uh, play one of his medieval instruments <laughs> by the priory dressed up as a medieval uh, uh, <laughs> chap in a smock i can't quite remember it was all it, yes do you remember yeah, yes yeah uh, that was yeah that was, uh, <laughs> and your green tights yes there was tights involved <laughs> anyway so the, anyway, lot, lot, lots of uh, anyway yes yeah, so absolutely wonderful colleague and I, I, i'm so glad so many of you could come and um, share in the kind of celebration of his work and his life and i hope those of you who didn't know him in person uh, can just kind of take away some example of how fun a, a life in science can be and how satisfying it can be and uh, uh, picture yourselves doing it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's all I want to say. But if anybody else wants to say anything, uh, now's the time. Uh, yeah, Ron, yeah. <laughs> I had not planned to say anything at all, um, but I feel like I just wanted to. Um, because I need Mike from perhaps a different perspective to most other people. Because I was an undergraduate here in the hallowed days of the early 70s. Um, and a picture we just saw of long haired louts in front of the library. I was one of those. So I came to Sussex in 1973 and I got in through clearing. So I wasn't clever enough to go anywhere else. Um, so thank you, Sussex, for taking me. And I went into biology, and there was all these old men that were teaching me, of which Mike was one of them. Um, of course, in retrospect, he probably wasn't such an old man. Um, he might have been in his early 30s. <laughs> and there was lots of other teachers as well. I mean, Paul Benjamin and, and Tom Collett, they're both here. Um, and the one thing about Mike was he was an absolutely wonderful undergraduate teacher. He really, really was. Um, and he was the one who's, because I've worked in vision all my life, and he was the one who really got me interested in it. I thought, this looks like fun, because the word fun has come up many times. And he really did make vision fun. So thanks, Mike, for starting me out on this career. 
but it went beyond that because when I finished, I had a choice. Um, and that is I could either become a management trainee in a gasket factory in Slough, because I had that job nailed on. Um, but I did quite well as a student. So I thought, well, this actually might be fun. I, I might actually do this. And um, I asked Mike if he had any idea what I could do for a PhD. Um, and first of all, he sent me to Wales um, to work with a friend of his on Ecclesia, because I had this idea that I wanted to correlate biology to behavior, neurobiology to behavior. How difficult could it be? Um, <laughs> so I went to the, um, Wales to look at the tail flicks that was sponsored of Ecclesia. And we got purple sea slug, ugly thing. Um, and I was shown a video, and this is the behavior of it going to the left. And this is the behavior going to the right. <laughs> and this is the neuron you will record from. And uh, the whole room full of students all recording from a different neuron. So well, it's not really what I had in mind. Um, <laughs> and then he, he, he told me, he had this drinking buddy of a guy who was at Suffolk called Bill Munz, who had recently gone up to Scotland. And maybe I might like to do a PhD with him. So I went up there. And the first thing he said to me was, Hello, Ron. Do you want to go to the pub? And I think this is really going to <laughs> So not only did my start my interest in vision, but he also organized the rest of my career. And then as I went up through the system for several promotion panels, Mike would appear and say nice things about me. So I should thank you, Mike, because without you, I'd never had a career. <laughs>